I started out hating my husband and my feet hurt. It all was worth it in the end. The pain we all seek right here. Show the buck, Eric. Am I gonna get sponsored now? <laughs> you missed a couple times. Like four. <laughs> I did it all in one Rimrock Stalker. Nice job, buddy. Thanks. When traveling to Mexico, there is the possibility of both driving and flying. It is a possibility to do drive both to and from Mexico when you're hunting, but flying, I've found, is a much better option. Not only does it save you time, but crossing the border with your rifle and deer if you harvest can be a rodeo. All right, day number one in Mexico, hunting. Headed out, we're gonna high rack up to the spot, uh, and then hike, get up to a glassing point where we can see a long ways and see if we can't find a mature animal. Here we go. Go with a reputable outfitter. After a lot of research, I decided to go with Spencer Brock of Old Mexico Hunt Company. After speaking with him on the phone, I had a good feeling about Spencer. And at the end of the day, you need to trust your gut. Go with who you like, go with who you trust. You'll have a much better experience. All right, so we just hiked up that hill, trying to get a better vantage point. This country's so flat, the mule deer tend to hang or mostly hang in the in the flat stuff. So we're just up here taking a little bit of inventory. And when I say inventory, we're trying to find a deer because we haven't seen a meal deer yet. Uh, so we'll just kind of glass and then see if we can't turn something up. Spent the morning glassing from this mountaintop and no luck. So we're now socked in. Can't see much, we're gonna move further that way so we can hopefully try to turn something up. Supposedly Spencer hasn't seen much either, so. Back to the truck we go. Gonna try to get a little bit different vantage points if we can get some of that country that's not burned off, so. Most tactics of old Mexico are high rack. Uh, most all outfitters in Mexico hunt from big high racks. It's basically a rack that's built up from the bed the allows you to get the elevation to see down into the thick forage. The guide then drives around until you hope to find a big buck in an opening and then you shoot from the rack. Well, this is a common tactic. We found zero luck from this. No, we're gonna try it. We're gonna do anything possible we could to find a big buck. I wanna go back to what I do best and that's getting elevation, using my eyes and um, getting behind my rifle. While there are few spots to gain elevation and glass into the thick forage, there are a few options such as hilltops, mountaintops, or even a water tank. After several days of grinding, this was the first mature animal that we had seen, and it presented me with a difficult choice. On one hand, I only had two full days left on the trip, and at this rate, I was worried I was going to leave Mexico empty-handed yet again. With two tags to fill, it was very tempting to set up and take this guy. But on the other hand, this buck just didn't have those big buck characteristics that I had set out for. So I elected to be patient and pass on this opportunity and take it down to the end of the fourth quarter. We're going to climb this plateau. Let's see if we can't glass this big 220 buck that we heard. There was rumors of coming over here. We're in a spot that's a little more on the F though, which means open. Gonna see better. So we can climb this hill, do some glassing. It seems as though everyone thinks if you spend the money to go down to Old Mexico with a good outfitter, that's an automatic, guaranteed kill a big buck. That's simply not the case. This is my third trip to Mexico, and it came down to the last day and a half. So just because it's Old Mexico, don't expect that you're just going to go down and slay a giant. It's not the case. It's, it's hunting, it's grinding, like any other type of hunt. No luck up there. You'd think with all that country we could see that we'd be able to find more deer, but... Not the case. We're gonna probably drink something, eat something, and jump back in the good old high rack. See if we can do any good there. So that's the plan.
After passing up the buck earlier, I started to get a little worried. Day four was coming to a close, and we had zero luck the rest of the day. So what do you think's going on there, Master Guide? We're getting our ass handed to us right now. Gosh. Mexico hates me, man. Tomorrow, though. Tomorrow's going to be the day. Tomorrow's a dia diferente. Let's see. <sighs> Turn over a new leaf tomorrow. Start the new year off with a big buck. Sounds Anybody can kill one at the end of the year, but it takes somebody special to kill one at the first of the year. There you go. One thing I've come to expect with Old Mexico is that the cooks take super good care of you. The food is unparalleled, and they keep you well-fed with fresh quesadillas, guacamole, salsa, and enchiladas. About some morning at day four, we just make it up to a point of glass before you see one small little thing this morning. We just need some cooperation from the gear today. We got a buck here that looks good. He's the best buck of the trip. He's probably a 180 glass buck. I'm trying to decide if I want to kill him. I've got two buck tags. We're just trying to see what he does here. proud of myself. I hit him a little far back. The wind got you a little bit. The wind got me a little bit and I've got just a deplorable setup here as far as shooting at distance. <laughs> this is my setup here. I was kinked in half and falling off this cliff right here. Whoa. As I fall off the cliff. But he's cool buck. I'm happy with him. He's wide. He's got good forks. Eric says he's got a little inline. He's a cool, cool buck. Yeah, still got one tag to go, so I'm happy. I'm happy with him. Best buck we've seen. Man, a lot of respect for these Mexican bucks. Man, they are hard to find. They're cagey. Even in the rut, they don't quite act like our mule deer up north. Anyway, hope to get my hands on this mule deer here soon and take care of him. Pretty awesome, Spencer Old Mexico Hunting Company. Phenomenal, phenomenal operation. Takes his deer hunting and deer management very serious. So, get a look at this buck here in a minute. Mexican mule deer right there. It's got this cool little inline here. Biggest buck, biggest, most mature buck we found day four, second to the last day. Still got a day to go, so we're gonna keep hunting, but it's a cool, cool, cool first buck here in Sonora. So, couldn't be more stoked with him. He's got Regressing nose here. I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but definitely smells of rut. Hit him a little bit far back, but got the job done. So after shooting a buck, expect the outfitter to give meat to the guys and the cooks. It's a way of payment for the locals for helping out. In old Mexico, you can purchase multiple tags, be it two, three, five coos deer, ten mule deer. It's basically what your budget allows so being able to shoot multiple animals is kind of up to your time and your means really this is a little miniature rat oh the baby javelina huh how'd you how'd you catch that uh -huh. yeah with our hands because we were looking on you just saw it running i actually sent the cowboy after him and he caught him they're actually a pretty sweet little guy. thing, huh? Yeah. Oh, he was pissed when we caught him. He tried to bite us. Oh, he did? Oh, he did not like us all, but now he's used to us. You know, it was an hour. Oh, my. Or nothing. What are you going to do? You want to try and shoot Well, just Renee's. I gave him to Renee, Carlos's boy. Oh. And he's going to feed him and stuff? Bottle feed him and stuff, raise him. Oh, they they actually make pretty good bread. He's actually pretty dang cute, dude. Oh, yeah. Took me like. Took out his umbilical cord. Does he? He's like probably a few days old. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, he's coming at us, snapping his jaws. And really? And, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Squealing. He's actually he's so pretty dang cute, hard. man. Yeah. Unreal. His little nose. Will he jump off here or is he pretty? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Has he pooped on you yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're fine. He, has he pooped on you? Oh, no. He. We had him. Poor little guy. That's awesome. 
So Spencer, as he was hunting around with another buddy, Kobe, was actually able to bump into this orphan javelina as they found its mom expired that had been chewed on coyotes. It's a pretty crazy experience to see this cute little guy. And just watch him follow your legs and how much he would bond with you. Though nervous, but put his complete trust in you. All right, we're headed up on day number five, last day of the hunt. We're going to get to the top of this plateau and do some glassing, see if we can't find some big running bucks out in the flats. So, All right, it's the final day here in Mexico with Spencer. Old Mexico Hunt Company. And Eric and I are going to head down. We spotted a big buck. A lot to actually spot it at. We're gonna head down two ridges and cut the distance. He's at 1,400 yards now. Big typical with some giant back forks. Just a beautiful, beautiful deer. Um, I'm gonna go see if we can cut the distance. I'd range that knob down there and it's roughly 400 yards-ish. So, wow, it's tough, huh? It's tough to get him, it's tough to see him. We're gonna make it happen. Really? Calm, yep. Just over him. Just over him. A little to the left. Over him or under? Over him. Got him. I missed once just over him or under him. I thought I was under him. Uh, Eric said I hit him on the second shot. I, I couldn't hear it. I didn't hear it smack him. It's about 900 yards. We're just waiting this buck out. Uh, Irwin's got eyes on him about 800 yards away above us. We got a glimpse of his rack and he turned and he bet it again. He's only gone 60 yards from where I shot him. 200 grain ELDX is a lot to have in you, so I was actually surprised how well he took it. So we'll kind of see how he does here. 845 yards. Me and Balata. We got it down. Irving spotted him from way up top. Just shot desert stud. Wow. Get on this boy. He's freaking wide. Wow. While trashy bucks are cool, I've always dreamed of shooting a giant typical. <laughs> a four point that stretches 31 inches across and just just shy of that 200 inch mark was a buck I never thought I'd shoot. I, I knew I'd get to close to 200 or 200, if you will, but I never thought it would be in a typical frame buck. Man, when I hit him at 845 yards, I believe it was, I was just like, oh my gosh, it was a good shot. I've been carving a little bed out on the side of the hill for a half hour breaking branches and trimming trees, if you will. Just trying to make sure my bullet had a clear path and I missed one time just over his back. I think it clipped his hair, but he was so ruddy that he didn't care. What do you think, man? I think we got it done today, buddy. Last day, two bucks, 30 incher, 32. And we had like a window like this to thread that yeah. bullet. And we were watching the exact same spot that we were willing him to come out. It oh, happened. Yeah. It happened. It happened. There's your proof right there. That's awesome. Awesome day, man. Good shooting. Two days in a row. Yeah. It's amazing how hard these Mexican guides work, from helping you locate animals to ensuring your success. As you can see here, they've got this big buck hogtied to a stick and are carrying him out whole for two and a half miles. When caping your buck out in preparation across the border, make sure every piece of flesh and all ticks are completely removed from the hide. If the Border Patrol finds anything they don't like, they'll confiscate your animal and more or less leave you buckless. Just another reason to have a great outfitter to help you get through this process and make sure all flesh and meat is removed from your skull cap or skull and your cape is 100% pristine.
Hey guys, thank you for watching our Mexico bonus episode. This concludes our 2020 Mule Deer Country series and we hope to see you on our next series. A special thanks goes out to Spent, my buddy Spencer from Old Mexico Hunt Company. If you guys are looking for an awesome outfitter, he will treat you like a king and Spencer's your guy. He'll treat you like a million bucks and he'll work his tail off and put you on mature animals. And as usual, we're gonna be doing a giveaway to kind of conclude the Mule Deer Country series and we're giving away our brand new multicam vinyl harness along with one of our multicam rifle covers. And as you all know, all you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment on this video, and we'll pick a winner on June 26th. Best of luck. We appreciate all you guys' support. We appreciate your support buying our gear, watching our videos, sharing it on Facebook and Instagram. We love you guys.